Hey everybody, Damien from Bay Ridge DIY here. Today in my video, I am gonna turn this hand crank number 32 heavy duty meat grinder into an electric meat grinder. Something I always wanted to do, I figured I'd make a really cool video on it. I picked up this motor, it's a gear reduction motor at an estate sale. I think it would fit this really well. Let's see how it goes. Stick around, I'll show you how I did it. What you will need for this build is a number 32 hand crank meat grinder two love joint connectors with a shock absorber, a gear reduction motor, and an aluminum plate to raise the motor up to the same level as the meat grinder. Once I have all my components in place, I do a quick dry fit just to get the length and the width of this unit. The length of my meat grinder and my motor combined is a little under 24 inches and about 12 inches wide. I found a piece of solid surface countertop, so I cut it down with a carbite tip table saw blade. I cut it to 30 inches in length and 12 inches in width. I cut the countertop a little bit longer than I needed, so I can make a place for a bowl to sit underneath. Once I have the grinder and the motor set where I want it, I make a center line and a reference line where the bolts will go. I place the grinder back on the top and mark all four mounting holes with a pencil. And then with a 3 8 drill bit, I drill out all four of the holes. I flip the grinder and the surface upside down and line up the holes. On a scrap board, I mix up some fast dry five minute epoxy. This will hold the quarter 20 T-nuts in place on the bottom of the solid surface countertop. I coat the outside flange of the T-nut with epoxy, making sure not to get any on the threads. I then put them in the hole and draw them down tight from the bottom with another bolt. Once the epoxy has set and is dry, I flip over the grinder and get ready to mount the motor. With the aluminum spacer in place, I set the motor and the love joint connectors together. I then use a pencil to reference the holes where the motor will mount to the aluminum plate. With my drill press and a 13 64th drill bit, I drill out all four of the holes. I clamp the aluminum to the bench, add some oil, and use a quarter 20 tap to cut some threads into the aluminum block for the motor to mount. After the holes are tapped and cleaned out, I use some machine screws with an Allen key head to fasten the motor down to the block. I will need to mount the aluminum plate to the solid surface countertop. I use my square to mark out four places that I can drill holes. Back at the drill press, I repeat the same steps I did before, adding oil and drilling out these holes, then taking the tap and threading them with a quarter 20 thread. While I'm doing this, I'd like to remind you to subscribe to our channel if you want to see more great DIY videos like this one. Now that the holes are drilled into the aluminum plate, I need to transfer that pattern onto the solid surface. I use some blue masking tape so I can see where the holes will be. I use a screw to push through the hole and mark onto the blue masking tape so I know where to drill. I put a piece of wood under the location where I'm going to drill. I did find out that this solid surface likes to be cut with a sharp bit and high speeds so it doesn't chip out. With everything drilled out, I mount the aluminum plate to the solid surface with some quarter 20 hex head bolts and washers.
To reduce any vibration from the motor, and to raise the motor up to be level with the grinder, I added some felt cushions to the bottom of the motor before mounting it. A razor blade worked best to cut the holes out. To make a place for the meat to fall while grinding, I want to cut a 6 inch hole in front of the grinder to slide a bowl underneath the surface. I mark a reference hole 3 inches from the front of the grinder. I use a downward spiral bit and my router with a template to cut the hole in the solid surface. It cuts pretty easy with a sharp bit. I lower the router a little bit each time I go around, not to take off too much at once and chip the solid surface. Once the hole is cut out, I use a quarter inch round over bit to round over the sharp edges on both sides. To build the base to sit underneath the solid surface, I chose a product we call Tech Ply. It's an amazing plywood, multi-layer with maple and ash cross bands. With my 5 inch strips cut down at the table saw, I bring it over to the miter station and cut two pieces at 30 inches and two pieces at 10 and an eighth. This will give me a 3 eighths inch overhang. With some tight bond wood glue and some 1 inch brad nails, I fasten this simple base together. And then on to spraying it with some pre-cat lacquer. I didn't want any screws holding the top down to the base, so I used some fast dry five minute epoxy to hold the solid surface to the base. Once I had the epoxy on all the edges, I set the base on top and let it set up for about an hour. Now onto the final assembly. The motor will be mounted permanently to the solid surface, but the grinder will be mounted with some thumb screws with packing nuts so you can remove it and wash it after each use. So we put the finishing touches on the meat grinder today. Turned out really good, better than I thought it would actually. Um, works really good. A couple of things I didn't show in the video. I brought the auger to a machine shop to have the end spun down on a metal lathe. We didn't get the video of that. I dropped it off there. They did it for me real quick and it's good. Doesn't cost that much to have it done. If you have a local machine shop, a few bucks will get that done for you. The other thing I didn't show was I made a plate to sit over the top of this hole. I took the cutout from the hole, epoxied it to another piece of the solid surface, put it over the top of there. That'll be good in case you're doing anything with the sausage attachment for this. Uh, it'll work really well. One more thing I added to it for safety was a foot pedal. That way I can control the on and off with my foot. It's not constantly running. If something were to fall in there, I can shut it off real quick. It's not a plug and play type thing. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed building it. I really do enjoy making these videos. If you have any comments, please leave them in the box below. I'll answer anything I can answer for you. If not, I'll try to find the answer. Uh, please subscribe to our channel. That helps us out. And you'll see more cool DIY videos by Bay Ridge DIY. Till next time, have a good one.